and we are connecting and we I can't tell if I'm live yet because I am an idiot because I'm not on the screen <laughs> and we are live hello everybody and welcome back to another live stream I am excited to talk about some fights I'd love to know what everybody thinks about some fights we're gonna get this stream going Zane Glad to see you here already. I am very, very excited to talk about some fights. I'm going to start the vertical stream. Hopefully, it all goes well. They both go live at the same time. We've had problems with this in the past. I'm excited for this, man. I'm excited. All right. So, we hit live on that. Let's see if we can get the vertical stream going as well. And we're solid. We are solid. Just got to set that up. Sorry, guys. I can't set up both chats at the same time when we were, when I'm planning these things over here excuse me sorry about that everybody just gotta give me a second here just gotta give me a second because youtube you're not supposed to do this really actually is do both streams at the same time so i have to set up both chats separately i gotta make them both into new tabs which is again very very strange so gotta fix all this up we will get to breaking down some fights in a second so what i would love to do with this and i've done this in the past guys for a couple cards I'm going to break down some fights, give my thoughts on what I think about some fights. I just had a really, really good full card breakdown video. In my opinion, it was very good. Broke down some real, real fun fights over there. And I want to do the stream. I want to see what everybody in chat thinks about these fights. I would love to do like a little bit of a breakdown with everybody over here. What's up, Evan? Can't believe Matthews is an underdog. Dude, this prime is very technical and composed. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't mind those odds, but I don't hate what you're saying at all. Like, he is a very, very good fighter. I think that fight's very close, in my opinion. Yeah, we're only talking MMA now, Zane. We're only talking MMA. <laughs> All right, we got to get both chats out here. Bang. We got both chats. Just going to set it up really quick. Almost done. Almost done. Going to go to live chat on both of them. There is a regular non-vertical stream on the channel as well. Sorry about this, everybody. Too bad we can't uh, do this before the stream starts. We're not supposed to be doing this. Thank you. Staying here. Boom. Did you like the stream? Bang. We're good to go. Solid. All right. We are here. Actually, and I think they changed up the bout order because we're starting off with Angel Pacheco versus Callan Logran. I subbed all the channels. Dude, Zane, thank you very much. Yeah, now welcome back to another live stream, everybody. I am your guy with too many YouTube channels. For context on that, we were just live on the gaming channel. If anybody's ever interested in gaming, go check that out. It's on the Clun channel. Very, very quality stuff over there. But anyways, I am so excited to watch Angel Pacheco fight just because of his Contender Series fight. I know this was a loss. And I feel like a broken record talking about this because this is what I was talking about in my video. He, this dude lost to Danny Silva. Could have won the fight. In my opinion, this fight could have gone either way. But we know what, how good Danny Silva is at this point in his career. He was fighting and his ear was actually falling off of his head. And he fought like he didn't have a care in the world. I can tell you, if I was fighting and my ear was falling off, I, I don't know if I'd actually quit like with all that adrenaline. But this dude is nuts. This dude has the heart of a champion, and Logran is a very good striker. I mean, it depends on what to look at him, because he is pretty stationary when he fights, but some guy is going to take advantage of those leg kicks eventually. We just haven't seen it yet. What's up, Devish? I've got both female fights to go over 2.5, and, uh, Al excuse me, Algico and Nurasulan plus Bruno Silva. What do you think about this parlay? I don't love the over 2.5 rounds. I don't think it's a bad bet, to be honest with you, but... Okay, to go over 2.5. Oh, okay. Just the female fights to go over 2.5. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you there. I am really, really high on both Bruno Silva and Nursutan to win. But to go over 2.5, it makes me a little bit worried myself. I don't know if I, I haven't placed any round bets yet. And I'm unsure about that. But I do like, I am really, really high on Bruno Silva this week. If Bruno Silva loses this weekend, we can never predict MMA ever again. I really don't. I like the odds for Pacheco. 3-1 to one favorite for Lawran is crazy. I agree with that. I agree with that. I do like him as an underdog. I I think, like, I'm picking him because of his heart, dude. 
this this guy has the heart of an absolute animal. I don't think he could do that either falling off. Yeah, his ear was actually falling off, Zane. It's crazy. What's up, games? Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so it's a really good fight. I do think that Angel can win this fight. Over 2.5 is for female fights. Yeah, that's that. I, I don't mind that, but I always worry when it gets to over 1.5. I like parlaying 1.5 rounds. But for this fight, even, I actually don't mind this fight going over 1.5 as well, but I haven't looked at the odds for that. But yeah, honestly, for Angel, I was considering just hitting that just because of how much of an underdog he is right now. But then again, how many times have we been bit recently about these Contender Series guys coming, making their UFC debut, and kind of just falling off of a cliff, you know? I do like Angel in this matchup. I'm excited to watch him fight. I hope he gets the win, and I'm very excited for this fight. And Logren is a good fighter in himself. I'm excited. I'm excited for this whole card, man. I think this is a very, very good fight night. Now, I need to remember to open these up in new tabs because... I don't want to keep scrolling through the entire time. So, then we have Andre Petrovsky and Jacob Malkoon. Guys, honestly, with this fight, I think it's a very, very even fight. I made a complete betting guide video that's coming out tomorrow. It's already recorded. The, this is a little bit of a pick em fight, in my opinion. And they both kind of have the same style, which is crazy. Yeah, his ear was falling off. Lorraine is also very small, in my opinion. I would have to take a look and see at the weigh-ins to see... Uh, it, how if that size difference will really make a difference? Kellen is maybe the worst striker we've ever seen. He's the definition of a stiff board. I don't know how this guy's a big favorite. I think he's a good striker. He has like he throws good shots, but you're right. He is pretty stationary. And I've been saying for a little while, and I, I don't mean to be like, oh my god, I have some crazy, crazy knowledge to drop on you right now. It's pretty well known that this dude's leg is out there to get chopped up, and if Angel takes advantage of that, I, I mean, that's the way to beat him. That's the way to beat him. What about Algio? I feel like you should get the dub, I feel. I, I would I would say so as well. What's up, JL? Not gonna lie, I think Manon wins. Aaron has terrible striking. The volume's good, though. The volume's good. I, I'm high on Aaron Blanchfield, man. I think Manon is overrated. But you see a lot of people having different opinions over here, eh? Which is always... It makes for a very fun matchup. It's definitely better than the female fight we've just seen. Looks even you. What's up, Pierre? Also, Pierre, thank you very much for being a member on the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it. I see some good, good placements this weekend. I'm excited for this weekend. I think I'm going to make some money this weekend. I'm excited. Petrovsky feels like a good dog. He canceled the wrestling, and I feel like he's better on the feet. I actually think these two have pretty similar skill sets. They both want to come forward. They both want to take you down. They both come with big power shots. <laughs> I can see this fight going either way. I'm leaning ever so slightly to Jacob Malkoon in this bout, but Andre didn't look good in his last two fights. I know he didn't really get the chance to perform against Michelle Pereira, but in the Gerald Mearshart fight, if that fight lasted another second, or another 30 seconds, he was done. He was he was going out. He was getting finished, man. He was fading. And that, so when you have two guys that, in my opinion, I think their skill sets are very, very similar, I got to go with the guy who, and I know he's coming off of a loss, and <laughs> This loss, come on. <laughs> Before that, he did look good, and the only hiccup is against Brendan Allen, and Brendan Allen, he went to decision with, and I still think, dude, people call me crazy all the time for this. I think Brendan Allen's going to be a champion. I think this dude is so underrated, and he is improving every time we see him. I'm done doubting him. I'm completely done doubting him. Hey, Grant. Welcome back. I'm sorry, but how's Blanchfield versus Pharrell the main event? Yeah, I know. But it's a female fight that I'm actually looking forward to. It's better, way better than, I'm the best. I'm the best. <laughs> Grant, did you watch the fights last um, on Saturday? She came out doing that same thing again. I'm the best. I'm the best. You know what's funny, by the way, with Rose Namajunas doing that? She, we all thought it was really fun. At least a lot of people around me thought it was really fun when she was walking out the first time saying, I'm the best. I'm the best. And then she actually got the knockout. And now it's just cringe. Yeah, she did that. They're literally, I'm the best. <laughs> and that horrible... Dude, okay, I got to show you guys this picture. I saw on Reddit. Grant, actually, I sent that to you. Um, it's so funny, dude. I'm not even going to bother looking up my screen here for the stream. I'm just going to show it with my phone. This, <laughs> this picture of... <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Hang on. I'm just going to show it in my face cam. This picture of her. I'm the best. <laughs> Look at 
this thing, man. Look at that face. And then you have Pat Barry. Where is he? Oh, I wasn't zoomed into it. And then you have Pat Barry on the side of it. Like, oh, yeah. Rose is the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's such a funny picture. Like, dude. This face, man. Look at that. <laughs> it's wild. Oh. I laughed so hard when I saw it. <laughs> and people are saying she looks like <laughs> Sid from Toy Story. It's hilarious. <laughs> this looks fun. I can't lie. I need to get more MMA. Dude, Zane, you, you gotta. You gotta. It's the best sport in the world, dude. What's up, Jong? Rose had a bigger head this fight. <laughs> she actually did. I think her head grew. Literally. But Jacob is so chinny. Yeah, that I, that's, the, that's the problem, man. No, Alan isn't champ. He can be top five, but not champion. I, see, everybody calls me crazy. Everybody calls me crazy. I think Alan, Brendan Allen's going to become champion. I would pick him against the top of the division. I would. <laughs> the only good things that happened was the bite and Talbot. Dude, Talbot shocked me. I thought, Tal I thought it was going to be like a little bit of a close fight, but I thought Cameron Simon would edge him out. That's shocking. The top four in the flyweight beats the breaks off Rose. Yeah, Rose is done now. And she can't fight at flyweight. <laughs> Depressing match. <laughs> Were you based out in IRL in Canada? <laughs> the face of depression. Yeah, that's that's Thug Rose for you, <laughs> dude. The girl's like a nutcase too now. Like, what's going on with her? She seems so back to normal at the presser too, right? Oh well, what can you do? What can you do? Anyways, like I said with this fight, I think it is a very very close match. I think both guys kind of want to have the same game plan. Jacob Malkoon has looked better recently, so I do think he's going to get the win here. I, and he's just entering his prime. Andre Petrovsky is almost 33 years old right now. I, th I, I give the edge to Jacob Malkoon just a little bit. Talbot des described his knee as a suction to Cameron's neck. Oh, <laughs> I didn't hear that, man. Oh, <laughs> dude, that was a nasty knee. How tough is Cameron Simon, by the way? That's nuts. Let's go on to these fights. I know, I know, we should get on with the fights. But, hey, you know what? I, if you're interested, Devish, I, I have a whole full card breakdown video diving into everything. I do want to make these streams pretty involved with the chat as well. But I would love to hear everybody's opinion on these fights. Let's take a look at Mikhail, <laughs> Melissa Gatto and Victoria Dudikova. A fight, oh, excuse me there. A fight that absolutely everybody is excited for. You know, banger of the night. This one should be the main event. <laughs> Rose seems so slow. She did. She did. She, uh, she can't fight at flyweight. <laughs> Anyways, Melissa Gatto, Victoria Dudikova. Guys, I don't know if people are still really high on Victoria Dudikova because before she came and she was coming into the UFC, people were really, really high on her, especially after the Nunes KO. But I think that she she went through a decision with Jin Frey, man, and she's supposed to be this crazy finisher. I don't know, man. I think she's overhyped, and I think that she is just like your typical WMA fighter. I just saw your breakdown before coming in here. I watch all of your breakdowns. Oh, I really appreciate that, Devish. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. That means a lot to me. I hope it was well. How'd you how'd you like the new format, by the way? Throwing in the uh, odds jam page there, taking a look at where you can where, taking a look at like the early side of betting. I thought that would be fun to go into. And I also wanted to talk about like who I'd like to win in those fights, but I kept forgetting to do that. <laughs> Anyways, this fight, Melissa Gatto, Victoria Dudikova. I think that Melissa Gatto should have the strength advantage there. And the biggest thing is. Victoria Dudikova is going up and wait in this fight. Melissa Gatto will try to take her down, and I think that Melissa Gatto will be able to take her down. She'll be bigger. She'll be stronger. And I know she's coming off of two losses, but I don't know, man. I, 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 this is a little bit of a tough matchup. I can see a lot going wrong. This is definitely not one that I'm going to be betting on myself. Yeah, it's cool. Good, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. But I know Melissa Gatto's coming off of two pretty rough losses, but this Ariana Lipsky fight could have gone either way. And the Tracy Cortez fight... I am really high on Tracy Cortez. I had a bad read on Tracy Cortez. She is a good fighter. A good fighter for the flyweight division. <laughs> but I, I just don't see anything that Vittoria Dudukova is really going to do to hurt Melissa Gatto. I think Melissa Gatto is going to get a hold of her. And I think that she's going to take her down to do what she wants. Hey, Zane, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in this stream as well. Glad you enjoyed. Thank you for the support. And I think Icarly over here is going to get the win. Dan Schneider style. Anyways. Let's move on to another fight. Let's move on to another fight. Ebo, Aslan, Anton, Turkals. Guys, this fight all comes down to can Ebo Aslan last a little bit more than a round? I don't know if he will. I don't know if he will because this dude is a very, very powerful KO artist. 
They fought once before, if you didn't know. Ebo Aslan beat the crap out of him for a round and gassed out. That really makes me worry when picking a fighter. But then again, the Pleasure Man, he has been finished in his last fight just six months ago. We're going to get to McKee. We're going to get to McKee. What do you think, Joseph? Gatto by decision 29-28. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Also, guys, we have quite a few people on the short stream over here. If you guys are interested, just in case you didn't see the, the poll there, you can come over to the landscape stream we have. We have one that is not sh short form as well. Whatever you want. We have two streams going on at the same time right now. Anyways, Ebo Aslan, it all literally matters. Can Ebo finish him in a round? If he doesn't, I think the same thing will happen. I can very well see the exact same thing taking place because since they fought, I know it was a little while ago, but since they fought, I don't think either of them really changed in their styles. I had a bet on Ebo and Dana White's Contender Series. Hey, there you go. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> hey, what are you thinking about him right now? What are you thinking about him right now? Are you going to bet on him? I'm definitely not touching this one myself. I don't even like the round lines. I can't remember what the round lines were. I think I was looking at it. It was a missed kick by Ebo that turned that, excuse me, it was a missed kick by Ebo that turned him around and Anton went for his back immediately. Yeah, I know, but still, he was gassing out and that was the whole reason. But, hey, props to Anton, man. But you always got to worry that when you have a guy that just got KO'd, that really makes me worry. When you have a guy that just got KO'd because you never know how they're going to come back. And that makes me, especially if you're fighting a guy like Ebo, he can definitely chin you if your chin's not okay in six months. Still a little bit fresh for a KO. So I don't know, man. I don't know. It's really, really tough. But Ebo has looked really, really good since his contender series. No, he are, no, he won clearly in Dana Way contender series. Also, I'm skipping this one. No, I know. What are you talking about? Yeah. He's just coming to the UFC. He looks really good. Anyways, yeah, th this fight is just, I, I don't know how this is going to go. Ebo can get a finish. If not, he can gas out. I think that this is going to look pretty much the same as the first one. Well, I mean, like, it, it, it can play out either way like that. I don't think either of them have really changed their game at all. Based on my experience, uh, one should avoid parlaying heavyweights and betting on debuting fighters. There has been some debut fighters recently that I have really, really liked, and then again, they just completely dropped the ball. Like Andre Lima, I was high on myself. And I was really hesitant to bet on him. And I wish I would have put more on him. But then again, that was probably a safe decision. But man, yeah, heavyweights, dude. You never know with heavyweights. I got crushed by Tai Tuivasa. I thought he was going to win that matchup. I was very confident in Tai Tuivasa to win that fight. And Mick Parkin, I bet on, which barely got the job done. I remember I couldn't take my eyes off Evo's nipples. He has some weird nipples. Oh, no. Now, now I'm going to be looking at it, man. <laughs> I don't think I noticed his weird nipples before. <laughs> it's like Kevin Lee's belly button. That's how I feel every single time you see Kevin Lee's belly button. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep going. Let's keep going to the next fight. Let's keep going. I, I think it's a really good card. Okay, who was talking about Connor Matthews earlier? Because I think Connor Matthews is a very, very good fighter himself. I like Connor Matthews a lot. But I think this is another one of those fights. And I always feel bad when I'm making prediction videos because they're, especially recently for a lot of these fight nights, the matchmakers have been doing a fantastic job with the matchmaking. I think both guys could have strengths here. I think both guys are really, really good. And I think Dennis Bazooka is better than what we've seen him. He lost to Sean Woodson. Does anybody know, by, by the way, because I recorded and I forgot to look at it. Does anybody know, because I was talking about the Sean Woodson fight on my full card breakdown. I thought this was a short notice, but I don't even remember if it was Dennis or Sean that took it on short notice. I don't remember. And that might have affected the performance, you know? Regardless. I saw Bazooka at minus 200 last week. I think this is a pick em fight, dude. I really do. Connor Matthews is really, really good. So is Dennis Bazooka. I think he's way better and just got fed some really, really good fighters. I know he got a KO'd four months ago, but Connor Matthews is going to KO him. Yeah, he could. But I, y all know what Connor Matthews wants to come to do. He wants to come in. He wants to be technical. He's very, very good at what he does. I think this fight could go either way personally. I would love to know what you guys think about this one. A lot of people are really high on Connor Matthews, but then again, you got to take a look at Connor Matthews coming into the UFC, coming into the contender series, like we were just saying. I don't know if it's a good idea to necessarily bet on debuting fighters. Dennis Bazooka has that UFC experience. It was Dennis that came on short notice against Sean. I knew I was remembering that correctly, but I didn't want to sit here and, and act like I knew it if I didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, say, but then again, you could. That was 
a performance where you could I, I, I don't want to say erase it, but it's something that you could take a look at, especially he took this on shortness against a guy like Sean Woodson. It's aging pretty well. Jamal Emmers, yeah, that happens. But Jamal Emmers is a good fighter too. I think this fight could I think I could see both guys having success in this fight. I really, really could. Let's keep going. Let's keep going to Julio Ars and Herbert Burns. <laughs> you know what's funny is my dad's not for I've told this story on stream before. Really, really long story short. My dad hates Gilbert Burns because he's always crying. And I'm like, Dad, do you remember Herbert Burns? My dad's a big UFC fan, but he just doesn't remember Herbert Burns. I don't know why. And I'm like, he's a bigger crybaby than Gilbert. I'm a big Gilbert fan, man. Not necessarily about Herbert, but so I can I hope <laughs> I low key hope that Herbert Burns loses really bad. Herbert Burns starts crying so I can watch my dad go nuts. <laughs> It's going to be really funny. <laughs> it's like, I don't remember last time. I don't remember which fight it was, which one of these fights. It, I was about to say it's, I don't, oh, I don't remember which one it was. It must have been the one year one because I'm remembering it correctly. But Herbert Burns and Gilbert were like sad together leaving the arena. And it was low key funny to me. <laughs> but anyways, guys, when breaking down this fight, Julio Arce is, he hasn't been able to stack up a win really. And he's been off for a little bit at this point now. But he should be better everywhere except for the jujitsu of Herbert Burns. Come on, give me something to bet on Herbert Burns. He's no, don't bet on Herbert Burns. No way. I mean, it's possible, dude. It's possible that he gets a submission. But if he doesn't get a submission, he's. I want to see you say good about Herbert. No, I can't. He's a submission, or he sucks. All he has is submissions, man. And don't get me wrong, he is very good at jujitsu. He's probably better than Gilbert Burns at jujitsu. He's very dangerous if this fight goes to the ground, but I think the odds speak for themselves in this one. I yeah, but unfortunately, man, I'm a I'm a big fan of Gilbert, but not Herbert. <laughs> and I always have the, I always have a really good time watching any of the Burns brothers of my dad. <laughs> yeah, so against Bill Algio when Gilbert took Herbert back in his arms. Yeah, it's so funny, dude. <laughs> it's a good time. Anyways, yeah, I I think that if Julio Ars can stay away from the submissions, keep the fight on the feet, which I think he will be able to. Plus, Herbert Burns is 36 years old now, coming off of almost a two-year layoff. Two back-to-back -back KO wins. A guy with the heart issues. I think Julio Ars has got this one in the bag, dude. I really, really do. But, hey, the submission game is always possible. Always possible. Now, Verna Jandaroba and Lupita Godinez. This one's interesting because Lupita has looked really, really good. And Verna seems like she's been a little bit better recently I know she's 19 and 3 she's had a couple of losses but I don't hold Amanda Hibas that high to be honest with you I don't think losing against Amanda Hibas is necessarily a good thing and losing against Mackenzie Dern sucks but then you're going about three years ago these these last two fights that she had both against Angela Hill and Marina Rodriguez were very good performances but you have Lupita Godinez who's on four straight and she's looking better and better but the problem is Lupita Godinez hasn't fought anybody good Anybody good. Lupita Godinez is going... And you know what really shined in the Tabitha Ricci fight? Well, Tabitha Ricci's okay. Okay, she's okay fighter. But I think that what I've seen... And I I know it's like just one performance that we've really seen. The takedown defense that we saw from Tabitha Ricci... From Tabitha Ricci, excuse me. From Lupita Godinez against Tabitha Ricci will be enough to stop anything that Veranda Jandaroba does. I think that she'll be better. I think she'll be able to keep the fight on the feet. I think she will win in the feet. Even if it does go to the ground, though... I think Lupita is better. I do think Lupita is better in this fight. And I think she is going to pretty much coast her way against Verena Janaroba. Lupita by split decision, you think? You think? I mean, it's possible. It's one of those fights. Verna Verna's pretty good for the division. <laughs> but I think Lupita is getting better every single time we see her. I think her takedown defense will shine. I think the striking will be better. I think she'll be stronger. And I actually think she's a better grappler. I'm picking Lupita Godinez in this fight. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Nate the Train Landwehr. He was the early prelim opener last time I talked about this. I hope Nate the Train wins. I like Jamal Emmer's two men, but Nate the Train's so much fun. They put him in front of a crowd, which is really cool to see. And he thrives off the crowd, man. He's not going to be like Danny Gay. Not going to be like Danny Gay. Maybe he's going to keep going. Everybody's going to be cheering for him. He's a big, big, fun guy. But I worry about his cardio, man, because Nate the Train's almost 36 years old right now. Look what just happened with Colby Covington. You know, it, you look what just happened with Colby Covington. Colby Covington didn't show up. The cardio didn't hold up. And I worry that about Nate the Train because we saw him 
in his last fight against Dan Ige, we saw the cardio not exactly hold up. That worries me. That, well, not I don't want to say the cardio didn't hold up. But he didn't fight like himself. The chaos. Running forward. Trying to kill everybody. You know? Uh, it makes me worry a little bit because Jamal Emmers could catch this dude. I actually see a similar path to victory that Jamal Emmers has versus Nate Landwehr. Jamal Emmers has great cardio. Great cardio. But the question is, does he have Nate the Train cardio? <laughs> but he does have... He has solid three-round cardio and can keep up a very, very nice pace. But we've never seen him be put through a Nate the Train kind of cardio fight. You know what I mean? I see a similar path to victory with Jamal Emmers. He could just sit down, pick his shot, counter-strike Nate Landwehr, but Nate Landwehr could overwhelm Jamal Emmers. Jamal Emmers is a very, very nice all-round game. I could see Jamal Emmers winning this fight. I could see Nate the Train winning this fight. This is a very, very interesting fight. What's up, Pop Chandler? Never been in your chat before, but I like the quality. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Hope to see you get back again soon. What do you think about this fight, Hap? What do you think about this fight? But yeah, I, I think this fight is very, very tough to pick. I like the over. I don't know if we had over 2.5 rounds. I know that's for sure, but I don't know if we have an over 1.5 round line. If we get an over 1.5 round line, I would like to parlay that with something because both guys are really, really tough. I don't think Jamal can finish Nate Train. I don't think so, but hey, he can definitely win the fight. That's going to be a very exciting fight. I'm a big fan of Nate the Train. I like watching Jamal Emmers as well. That's going to be a really, really fun fight. I see this something like Nate versus Onama. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see that going like that too. That's a very good call. Now, Chidi Nijikuani versus Reese McKee. By the way, I always forget how to pronounce if it's Reese or Rise. Regardless, I am so excited to watch Reese McKee in the UFC. I am so excited because, of course, he left the UFC, if you don't know. And he's coming back against Angelusa. He had a dog fight here. A dog fight. And he put, he was put through the ringer, man, when he was in the UFC. I think he belongs in the UFC. And, of course, he has improved with three stoppages. And it's against not-so-great opponents. But at the same time, he looked good against Angelusa. I don't care. I don't care. He looked good against Angelusa. The dude was walking forward like a zombie. They were calling him the Irish Zombie, and I thought that was his nickname. But, oh, I just got a notification for a subscriber, but I can't see who it is. If you subscribed, thank you very, very much. I'm sorry, I can't see exactly who that is. Regardless, anyways, I think it's an easy fight to pick, to be honest. My same rule with Billy Q. You can only implement cardio if you're actually good. Nate is cheeks. Onama is mid. That's why he lost. Embers is good. You know what? That's a very, very good point. That's a very good point. But the problem is, uh, I think that you can implement cardio. We've seen Nate the Train do that, though. We. I don't think that's like, you're right, but you're wrong at the same time. I, I know that's, that's kind of dumb to say. I know, but... I, you can implement cardio. People can crumble under that. It's just, you will have a better time doing it if you had a lot of technique behind it, right? <laughs> but yeah, you make a very good point, Chandler. Very good point. Interesting fact, Chidi at 170. I forgot about to talk about that. I forgot to talk about that, dude. My full card breakdown. I felt really bad afterwards. Because I was talking about the entire time of Chidi's chin. And he's moving down a weight class? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't love it. He's coming off of two. He had He's lost three in a row right now, two of them being KOs. I don't like it. I don't like it, and I'm not going to bet on somebody who's just been KO'd like that. He's 35 years old right now, got knocked out twice. When was his last fight? Six months ago, a little bit of time to come back, but here's the thing. Chidi is the better fighter. I compared him to Phil Hawes in the sense where it's unfortunate because he's so, so good, but sometimes he runs out of gas. Sometimes he gets clipped, you know? I can't bet on a guy like that. And I am high on Reese McKee. I think he's a good fighter. It's crazy to me the toughness that this guy has. The Irish zombie? Wild, dude. It's a very, very fun fight. I'm going to be picking Reese McKee. I can't trust Cheaty in this fight. I can't trust him. But let's move on. Let's move on. Bill Algio, Kyle Nelson. Guys, let me know what you think about Kyle Nelson. Because I am almost done doubting this guy. What are the odds for Chidi missing weight? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue how that's going to go. That's going to be an interesting to see, and it, if it'll weaken his chin even more. I was considering playing a bet against Chidi. Anyways. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. I just went through a stream on my other channel. My mouth is getting a little tired. Bill Algio, Kyle Nelson. Guys, 
Bill Algio should be better. He's a more creative striker. He'll be faster. He'll just be better. Kyle Nelson does a hell of a job for some reason, slowing down the pace and making people fight a little bit more of a simple, brawly, little bit of a brawly technical style with him. And he's done that in his last two fights. He could very well do that again. And if he does that again against Bill Algio, if he slows down the pace, makes Bill Algio fight like Kyle Nelson does, then I'm not going to bet against Bill <laughs> Kyle Nelson anymore. I'm not saying I bet on this fight. I don't like this fight to bet on. But I think Bill Algio should win this fight. He's just the better striker. It's going to stay on the feet. And I believe that's how the fight's going to go. I think he's better. I think he's going to do well. Give me Bill Algio to win this fight. Anyways, let's keep going. I'm very excited for this card. I believe I said this already on the full card breakdown, but I did place a bet on Nurslan Ruzi Boev taking on Cedricus Dumas. <sighs> I hate saying this, guys, because they they are UFC fighters, but Cedricus Dumas sucks. He's not good. He can't fight. <laughs> you know, it's unfortunate, but at the same time, I, I can't trust them to win. Aljo will bully your country, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see that happening. I can see that. <laughs> but this fight's easy to pick, in my opinion. Cedricus Dumas can be taken down. He's going to get taken down. Rusi Bolov has good takedowns. Power on the feet. He's going to take him down. He's going to do what he wants. And I don't think he's going to finish him, but I think he's going to do very, very well. This is my underdog pick of the card, Buckley by decision. I think he will be big. It will mix up the wrestling like Bilal and strike from a southpaw with power punches like Neil. I think Bilal, I, Bilal. I think that Buckley is going to win too. I think he's a very, very good underdog pick. But we'll 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 end up we'll end up talking about that. I just can't trust Vicente Luque at, at this point. I'm worried about his brain bleed too because we don't know exactly how healthy he is. But this one's easy to call too, in my opinion. This is almost lock of the card. Ruzi Bo is going to win. Cedricus Dumas, I can't believe he won two fights in a row. He shouldn't have won either of these fights. And my dog's making a bunch of noise. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. My dog has her tongue out. She's sleeping. You can't really see her. Oh, <laughs> She's licking something. <laughs> don't be afraid to say it. Dumas is genuinely terrible. Worst fighter in the UFC. I know. I, like, I feel bad because I'm a... You know what I think about, though? Like, I'm a guy with a microphone... Sitting behind my desk, it's very easy to talk crap about these guys. And I understand that perspective. You know what I mean? But I can't say anything good about Dumas. Do you know Clint from Die Hard MMA podcast? He placed a five-unit bet on Dumas. What? What? That's crazy, dude. And I don't know. I don't know. I got to check that. I got to check that podcast out. By the way, I started watching Kamar Usman and Henry Cejudo's podcast. I really, really like that. Speaking about MMA podcasts, that's. That's a crazy bet, in my opinion, man. If you want to go underdog, you're going to pick Dumas? <sighs> man, that's crazy. Guys, this fight's going to break my heart, dude. This fight's going to break my heart. I wholeheartedly believe I am the biggest Chris Weidman fan out there. I've liked him since he came into the UFC. I like him as a person. I like him as a fighter. He's going to get murdered. He's going to get absolutely murdered. Bruno Silva's better everywhere. Well, at this point in their career, it's a different, be a different conversation if Chris Weidman was in his prime. But Chris Weidman, especially when he came back from the broken leg, he was hesitant. He was slow. He looked old. He looked older than 39. Chris Weidman can't do it anymore. Bruno Silva is going to do what he wants to, him, whether it's on the feet, whether it's on the ground. Bruno Silva is going to probably, unfortunately, finish Chris Weidman. And I know Bruno Silva lost four of his last five, but I mean, like, take a look at the fighters that he's been taking against. Alex Pereira, Gerald Mearshart. Stepped down in competition, got a crazy win. Brendan Allen and Sharboon Magomedov. He's been put, he's been put through the ringer. Can you please utter the words, Bruno Silva parlay material? <laughs> I believe he is safe for a parlay. <laughs> Come on, Bruno is my last parlay leg. Yeah, see, there you go. I, I, if this is like the lock of the year so far, in my opinion. And I don't like... If Chris Weidman somehow pulls out a win, I don't care. It wasn't a bad call. We Nobody has any business predicting MMA because it's the craziest sport in the world if Chris Weidman pulls a win here. Uh, my heart's going to be pulling, man, because Chris Weidman's one of my favorite fighters, and I it sucks, but I'm betting against him. I have my money against him. It's just, there's no chance that he wins this fight, dude. It's going to break my heart. Bruno Silva's probably the best parlay piece on the card. He's probably the best parlay piece of the year. Chris Weidman can't do it anymore. Anyways, Vicente Luque, Joaquin Buckley. What we were talking about earlier. 
I do like Joaquin Buckley in this matchup. I worry about Vicente Luque's health. I worry about him kind of exiting his prime, and he didn't look so good in the Rafael dos Angeles fight. I know he, he, his fight IQ looked good. He fought a little bit differently. He was way more careful, but he's always there to be hit, and you don't want to be there to be hit against Joaquin Buckley. I think over the course of three rounds, it is likely that Joaquin Buckley lands a big shot on Vicente Luque, and I think it's going to really, really hurt him. It worries me too because, again, we don't know exactly, at least to my knowledge, how healthy Vicente Luque is with his brain bleed. I know he fought again against Rafael dos Anjos, but he didn't fight like he usually fights. Probably for the better, but I mean, Vicente Luque always kind of weaponized that chaos. I don't think it's very good to fight the way he did against dos Anjos against Buckley unless you're going to be able to take him down, and that's a big if. It's just that it'll be a home crowd for Chris, and he's from New York, and the fight is in New Jersey. I Dude... It's going to be sad. It's going to be sad. <laughs> He's going to go out on like, uh, I don't. I just hope he doesn't get finished. I hope we can see a good fight. Chris Weidman can just tough it out, get beat up. He can have like a moral win in that sense, you know? Retire Chris Weidman. Don't fight another Bruno Silva. They're feeding him to the animals, eh? Because Bruno Silva's a good fighter. Very dangerous fighter. What is Clembat meaning? Well, I have a series of channels on YouTube, and it's a very, very long story. I My first YouTube channel, long story again, but my first YouTube channel is called Clen. It was my gamer tag. And then when I made the MMA channel, I just wanted to keep the Clen thing going because I have a lot of YouTube channels. If you're interested, you can find it on the channel page. But I the best I could do for instead of just Clen MMA, I did the best I could with combat. I, it's a little dumb, but that's the best that I could do. Clenbat, combat, keeping the Clen in it. I thought that was the best way I could go about making MMA. You know what I mean? But that's the origin of the channel name. Nothing too special about it. <laughs> but yeah, I think that over the course of three rounds, it's likely that Buckley ends up catching Vicente Luque and he ends up finishing him. It's I, I see a world where Vicente Luque wins this fight, though. I don't think it's a lock, but I think definitely if you're looking for underdog odds, and I know that uh, according to topology here, it was better as... Uh, oh, Buckley's a... Oh, Interesting. I've seen Buckley at plus money. Oh, that's not bad. I like Clem, but I thought that was the best I could do. There's too many channels. I mean, not that it's a bad thing. I didn't want to just say Clen MMA or MMA Clen. You know, I didn't want to do that. So we went with Clen Bat. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Main event, last fight, Aaron Blanchfield, Manon Faro. We're talking about this earlier in the stream. I believe Manon Faro is overrated. I do. And I think Aaron Blanchfield, not underrated, but I think she's fairly rated. People are talking about Aaron Blanchfield being overrated. What's funny is the conversation's kind of around which fighter's overrated. <laughs> but I think it's Manny Faro. Yeah, you know what? She's had some okay wins, but nothing really impressed me. And they can't win against Rose didn't age well either. I feel Luke gives Buckley a vet lesson. Wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me. Honestly, I just hope nothing bad happens to Weidman's leg because I heard he heard it in the Tavares fight. Yeah, I remember that. But I know it. But I know that if Weidman does good, he's gonna keep fighting, and I want him to get. So I want him to get slept and retire. I just hope he retires after this, no matter what. Aaron Namako made of literally, literally. I think Aaron Blanchfield is going to deal with whatever striking that Manon has. Manon's probably a little bit better on the feet, but I I know that Aaron lacks some technique, but I think the volume and the aggression will be enough to get around Manon Faro. I think she's gonna take her down, do what Aaron Blanchfield usually does. Manon Faro is definitely tough. She's a very good fighter in the division, but I just think Aaron Blanchfield's better, and I think Aaron Blanchfield is on track to become a champion. It's that simple for me. She's younger, fighting someone who's 34 years old. I like Aaron a lot in this matchup, guys. I like Aaron a lot in this matchup. Thank you for being here on this card, guys. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I do want to stream more often on this channel. Oh, I hope this doesn't get rid of the short stream. Oh, no. Oh, no. It did. We're back. <laughs> I can't edit the short stream at the same time. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it like this, guys. All of you, thank you very much. I know we've had some lurkers in here too. We're rocking five viewers and four viewers on both streams together. But Hap and Devash, thank you so much for commenting on the coming and helping out with the stream. Jong, thank you for also participating in here. It means a lot to me. I, I want to do these streams more often, probably once a week with every card. If you, I, I do a lot of streams on my other channels, so I want to get really streaming on here too. You should stream more, bro. I'll check it out. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love streaming, man. 
And it's fun because I love talking about fights, dude. I love talking about fights and I like making videos, making prediction videos, but I really like that I can get everybody's opinion on the fights over here too. I just like talking about MMA. I'd be talking about MMA in my regular daily life. So <laughs> we got a YouTube channel on it. Aaron will crucifix man and sadly I like both these girls. I just like Aaron more. I agree with that. Come on, bro. Don't let don't go. Let's create a few parlays. <laughs> nah, no, no, no. We're we're just doing about we're just doing some prediction videos for today. I wanted to do a quick stream. Like I said, I was just streaming forever on my uh gaming channel over there. I'm gonna go eat something. Clan him on Aaron also, but how do we explain the takedown accuracy for Aaron being at 36%? Because she shoots like crazy. <laughs> I, You know what? I wouldn't shock me if Manon ended up reversing like one of those, throwing her a little bit. But I still think Aaron is relentless enough that no matter what, she'll get on top. I just think that's going to happen. But guys, I am going to head out now. Thank you so much for being here, both on the vertical and landscape streams. I will see you either in the next video or stream.